So let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15. I got to get my prop here. I'm like, what can I use for a prop? So I got this. <clears throat> 1558. I feel like we need to go on and talk about faith tonight. Um, we've been dealing with that. I see the word faith seems to be controversial as of late. Like, like it's some kind of new thing and it's a movement. Yet, <laughs> and when Jesus said, how many times did he say that the person was healed by their faith? Or, wow, I haven't seen such faith in the whole city. Right, And he used the, faith, the word faith a lot because faith is that aspect of believing. The word believe means um, that you receive, and when you receive, you take. So everything that he did for us means nothing if you can't take it. It's like having uh, medicine in the cupboard or vitamins that you're supposed to be taking. You'd be like, there they are. Yeah, we bought them. But if you don't take it, it does no good, right? And so, you know, it, it can't be an upside-down thing and a weird thing if, you're, if you believe and you, and you do that. Faith is all through the scripture. It's the basis of believing. It's an action word, right? So we're going to go on to, uh, talking about this. But I will tell you that there's some things that, you know, when, when we watch too much of the news, right? you sometimes got to watch just enough to see how stupid it is. And then you kind of can sort of figure out what's going on because it's like stupid on steroids most of the time. And it's inaccurate. I, I know when my son was in Afghanistan, um, the Army would only watch, I think it was Fox at that time. Um, and now that's been bought out or whatever because it was so inaccurate. I mean, they're there in Afghanistan. And what was being reported was not happening there. And then to watch that and be like, that's not even what's going on. That's not what's happening. <laughs> that had to be really disgusting. But, you know, so if it happens then, it's even so much more now that things are being misreported and things like that. Plus, there's distractive things where we make a mountain out of a molehill, you know. And whatever they do that, I'm always like, what you making this mountain for? Because what's really going on over here that we should be paying attention to? Because we're all in a wad about this thing, right? Now, one of the things that people have called in or they've asked about is the whole eclipse thing. Bom, 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 right? <laughs> da, na, na, na. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of those that, you know, if you listen to it enough, it can hype you up. And then you're like, well, what, if, what if it's the end of the world? And what if, you know, aliens are going to be released? And what if this and then? Well, what if? Because without that, all this garbage can take place anyway. We are at the end of the world. We are in the last days. I might not see it in my lifetime, but we are in the last days. We might be in the beginning of the last days, but we're in it. The Bible says that we can, we don't know the day or the hour that Jesus will return, but we will be able to recognize the season. And this is pretty seasony, yeah. right? There's only a few things that still have to be fulfilled. All the prophecies have come into order. Man, we're in that season. So it's not like, oh, no, now something's going to happen. No. It's walking itself out. And so we want to get distracted about some of these things and fearful. I had to uh, take somebody to Wisconsin, and, and I'm over there. I'm at a motel, and I look out the window, and there's flashlights. And people are, I don't know if, you know, because they're saying Monday's the big day. And, and uh, someone else was saying Sunday. And, uh, we don't even have that reported right. It's all over the chart. But people are out there with flashlights trying to check the sky. And I'm watching them, and I'm thinking, they got, they got their cameras because they're trying to see something, and they just know, oh, my goodness. If something ever happened where we'd end up in concentration camps, those are the people I wouldn't want in the camp with me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you could pick and choose, if I got to go to a camp, I'm going to pick and choose who's with me because I don't Because, <laughs> you know, you can get crazy. You can get so fearful. You can get just out there. And depending on our foundation, which depends on our faith, right? What we're built on is the foundation, and the foundation should be built in faith on something. If, if you say, I have faith in something, and I can talk you out of it within two minutes, you don't have faith in that at all. If you say, I believe, and I'll die on that behalf, yeah, that's a pretty good foundation. Amen? So your chair, for instance, my big prop here, when you look at a chair and you say, what makes this um, the most sturdy? Well, it's the back. 
That's what we, we always check that if we're checking a chair. We check the back. No, we don't do that. And might, might not even be the seat. You know, we'll check to see that. But really, it's based on everything that's below all this. And that's called your foundation. Anybody sit on a chair and all of a sudden the foundation goes out? <laughs> Two times, I can remember. <laughs> Lawn chairs are famous for that. I'm like, I should have checked that. And you're just like, poof, and you go backwards. And, and, and so, but the foundation is everything. And what you, uh, you have to believe, too, that you're going to be supported by that foundation. Right? So you check your foundation on everything, just like I should have checked the chair. All right, that feels good. And then sit down on the chair because you are convinced it will support you. Amen? So this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed. Oh, I like that part. Like you just... You're such a believer. You're so, you're so full of faith. You're like, I'm going to be faithful to this beyond what's asked of me. Being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion, in the Lord is not futile not, nor wasted. It is never without purpose. So the part that's at the top is be steadfast, immovable. That's got to be built on some kind of foundation. So what's your faith? See, faith is not a... Um, a Jedi power that some people just have more of, and they can just be like, this is what's happening. And everyone goes, oh, they're so gifted with faith. No, we all have a measure of faith, and even if it's a tiny mustard seed, it's what causes us to be able to land something and say, you know what? I believe. Therefore, I will do. Why? Because I believe. So we have to have a good foundation in that. Sometimes our chair was built wrong. You know, if this is standing for our faith and our, and our foundation, and, um, and we're constantly checking it because it's fallen over so many times, and we put it back together, and we didn't get the right information. It just wasn't passed down to us the right way, and it's an old chair, and I don't know how to make something new out of this, and it's a big deal. And so sometimes we choose to not take action because we never know, Right? I don't like being put in spots where I'd have to choose my faith. I'd have to stand for something or withstand in something because if I do that, you just, I can't trust this. You just don't know. I don't know if it'll hold me or not. And the areas where we've been wounded and hurt many times is where we got the legs kicked out from underneath us or the foundation wasn't pure or we were told something's not even word. Yeah. You've heard the story where I've shared where my grandma died when I was uh, little, and I definitely had a meltdown about that and everything. Well, part of that was I did not know what to believe. So lack of knowledge can be like no foundation. That's scary. So for some people, I could talk about the eclipse and just, you know, make it sound all sciencey, and you start freaking out because you have no foundation of even knowing what an eclipse is. And can I say that I do? Not really, but then I don't care. <laughs> if I cared, I'd have researched this all. But I got bigger fish to fry. You know, I am, I'm racing the reaper. And to me, that's a little bit more important than whether or not something demonic happens when the moon crosses, blah, blah. You know, um, you know so, <laughs> some demonic's going to happen. It happens every day. So we have to be wise and know that, you know, our society, things are going to introduce um, things to us that we have to be able to take a look at and go, no, that's not God. Or that's a lie. And you have to be able to discern that. But what do you discern that with? What do you believe? Because when you go to discern something, it has to be built on the truth. You can't dispel a lie unless you have absolute truth. That's where if you're coming out of trauma, for instance, and, and trauma always releases a lie in your life that you're believing, but it seems like truth to you. And it's that many times it's a lie from the pit of hell, but you believe it. And it's a truth to you. And in that, when somebody tries to speak the truth to that, um, we have a hard time receiving it because we have this other truth that's really a lie. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And so one of the things that was released to me as a kid when I said, why did grandma die, was, well, bad things happen to good people. Is that what the word says? 
No, the word does talk about in this world, there will be trouble, but take heart. You will overcome the world. It does talk about heaven and hell and where you go when you die and lays out a whole salvation plan. It does talk about that. But as a kid, I took that as a truth. And you know what that said to me? Well, then I'm not going to be good. Because I've seen some bad things happen to some really good people. And that became a truth to me that was a lie from the pit of hell. To the point I could be doing A's in school and then just not hand my schoolwork in because I felt funny about it. I didn't know at the time that's what it was, but what it was is I ain't going to do that good. I had this anxiety that said at any time something bad could happen because <coughs> I'm being too good. Amen? We have a lot of those that are our foundation, but they build your chair wrong. And eventually you're going to crash on that. Amen? Because it's not built in truth. And so here we are. In order to stay steadfast, immovable, uh, I don't want to be immovable and steadfast in something that's really a lie from the pit of hell. I want to know whom I believe in and that he is able and stay there. And then no matter what happens, no matter what I see, I know whom I believe in. I know what I have received, and I am moving from it. That sounds like stubbornness in the best way possible. In the best way possible, it just means you know how to stand and then stand there for in the evil day when wickedness is being released, okay? Uh, be steadfast and immovable. And you, you kind of want to check. Like when people come to a new church, they, they're checking out the pastors, the leaders, and everything, and they're, they're like, doing, I don't know if we can sit on this i don't know i heard some about somebody else sat on that chair before and fell i mean it looks stable <laughs> see what i mean we do that we're always checking foundations but many times we're hyper vigilant and we check all these foundations out there and we don't even know what we're standing on but we want to make sure all these foundations have it together i've come to the point that if i was a lay person trying to find a church if I go to that church and they say something I don't agree with, whatevs, here's the thing. My foundation is secure. I'm not going to leave all pee-pee hurt. Because <laughs> they believe differently than me. Because I know whom I believe in. It isn't going to be like, oh, shock and awe. I don't know what's in. That was so hurtful. It, it's like, hmm, I wonder what makes them think that way. This is what I know the word says. Amen? But sometimes we're not looking to build our own chair. We want somebody to already have that and just tell us what to do. Just, you know, just tell me. But then I don't trust you, so how can you tell me? Well, go ahead and tell me again. I don't know if I trust that. You tell me I don't trust that. And so we're hearing, 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 but we're not believing. Am I not right? And so now, oh, my goodness, with the whole thing that was introduced in 2020 and what's been going on forever but seemed like new to us, you know, with all the governmental stuff, the junk that's on TV, all the advertisement, everybody's like, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie, right? Because you're starting to see it. But the problem is then you go, how many times are we saying that's a lie versus where's the truth? And sometimes we can't handle the truth. We'll talk a lot about the lies that are going, I think that's a lie, and I think they're just trying to take advantage of us. Blah, blah. Yeah, well, what's the truth? I don't know. I'm busy thinking about all the lies. You'll make a difference in this world once you know the truth and the truth makes you free. Now you can take someone where you haven't gone or where they haven't gone and you can give them something they don't presently have. But you can't, you can't be going around just testing everybody's foundations. That's called hypervigilance. I don't know. We'll see. I just get on the corner a little bit. I felt weird. You know, be constantly doing that. And then, but you have no foundation yourself. So part of it is, yes, we do need to get with some big dogs, get with somebody who has had some people rest on them for a little bit, right? And be stable for them for a little bit and steadfast. You do need that role model too. But if none go with you, still you should follow when it comes to Christ. Amen? So... Um, here, let's go to a, another fun one. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. We're in that chapter. Uh, ver, or chapter 3, verse 9. 
For we are God's fellow workers, his servants working together. You are God's cultured field, his garden, his vineyard, God's building. See, he's putting us together. Well, God doesn't put somebody together and just have a really old lame foundation. Nor does he want us to build our house upon the sand, but upon the rock. So he's all about solid foundations. Because truth is truth is truth. It can't be sort of truth with a little bit of sand, but kind of a rock. You know, sort of, right? According to the remarkable grace of God, which was given to me to prepare me for my task. So he's got a mission, and this grace is carrying him. Like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation, and now another is building on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. That's like you have a church, like this one, or Word of Life, and it's built on a foundation. We're constantly trying to find where is it built on sand. We got to get rid of that and put some rock up in there, cement in there, whatever we got to do. We're constantly doing that because we know when we check out, somebody's got to be able to continue building on that. And if it's haphazardly made, it's going to fall eventually. So if we love the people coming behind us, we have to love them enough to make sure the foundation is. So sometimes people will say, why are you guys rules about stuff? Well, let's build a chair without any rules. Build a chair. I don't care about structure. I don't see where, you know. I mean, we could do that and just like slap something together. How long is that going to last? This has got to have hang time. According to the remarkable grace of God, which was given to me to prepare me for my task, like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation. And now another is building on it, just like your kids will build on where you left off. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? But in the last days, people are going to be lovers of themselves, selfish, smell like they're selling fish, like I always say, because <laughs> that's what selfishness smells like. Um, it's, it, there's going to be all this going on. Say there is a God and deny the power thereof. I believe there's a chair, but don't sit on it. So I don't know if that can support you anymore. That, what that used to be. I mean, back when Jesus was on the earth. We can't say that it's here now, though. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed back then, he heals now. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? If his word is true then, it's true now. Um, and, and so there's a foundation. So what's happening is churches... Uh, and I'll just say it, the government many times is want to change what's happening. That's why they would like to take over the churches. That's what they're trying to do right now. That's what's before the government for voting on right now. Right? It's not flashing on the news. It's not there out in front of us. Why? So as we're looking at the eclipse, with our flashlights <laughs> right in our backyard. Next thing you know, communist takes over and they tell us how to have church, which really is a sick foundation of control. And wherever there's control, there's witchcraft. Amen. So we have to know what we believe. And the um, Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 8 is to think on the correct things. And so how easy is it to, I mean, you can just be on your phone for a couple seconds and you're already thinking about all kinds of stuff that isn't pure, isn't righteous, isn't true. It's not going to help you with your foundation. I'm not talking live paranoidly, but I am talking like if you can't figure out your foundation, set all this stuff to the side and get with the builder. He'll show you how to build this. Because it has to be built on Christ. It can't be built on you. What he did on the cross was the starting of that foundation. Everything else is supposed to be built on top. And what we're doing is we're representing the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God here on the earth. Right? So he did this, we do this. He said this, we say this. And it just, it gets taller and taller. And it's, but it's built on such a solid foundation, we have hang time. Amen. And so then we ask ourselves the, the question, fearful things coming forward, how easy do we freak out? Depends on our foundation. 
So at that point, it's not good to, if we start feeling like we're freaking about something, to be like, it's that person, it's the government, it's this or whatever. No, I got to check my foundation. Because no matter what happens here, I got to know who I believe in and believe that he is able. He's going to take care of me. Well, what if you get killed? All I'm doing is dropping this dirt. And I'll be standing there going, good riddance. <laughs> I was getting kind of old. You know, and, and I'm home with Jesus. The only thing blocking me from leaving this place is this earthen vessel that I'm in. It's dirt and water. Really? That's what's keeping me from going to the place where I came from. We're just pilgrims passing through and we're here for a purpose. Amen. But many times we'll fear death. Will fear that everything's attached to the fear of death. It's like if aliens come, then what's gonna happen? You know, we've seen all these movies, which is kind of crazy because when television predicts the vision, it's usually 10 years back will predict what's gonna happen in the next 10 years or what they would like us to think is gonna happen because they're telling us the vision we're supposed to have. Yeah, that's why it's called that. Otherwise, I call it the box, you know. <laughs> well, it's not so boxy anymore. Now we got flat screens. So, but, but there's something about us coming to a point where we're unstable. We need to know where we're unstable. We need to check the legs on our foundation. You know what will check the legs on your foundation that you don't want to be in? But it happens to us all. What I call suddenlies. There's a car accident and your nephew's fighting for his life. There's a disease that comes or something like, because we go along in life, there's a part of us like, we're just living life in this nice little world. It's not a nice little world and wicked things happening, right? That's why he said there will be trouble. And so suddenly trouble will show up, bam. And then we're like, my foundation. I don't know where, who's got the, right? I got no solid to me. And then we're freaking out more about that than we are the incident that just took place. And your mind then will predict the worst ever. It will run the scenarios of the worst thing that could ever happen, won't it? And then especially if you ramp that up to a diagnosis, that's PTSD, it's post-traumatic. That means nothing's even going on, but I already fear the thing I know is coming. It's post-traumatic stress. Things that make us unstable really do go back to my belief system. In fact, I would want to be so strong that even if I was believing something wrong and I died like that, the Lord would say, well, you gave it your best shot. Man, you were in belief about that. But this is what my word says, right? Then being tossed back and forth on every wave of doctrine. Back and forth on every wave of doctrine. And even talks about, um, boy, I should look that up. But just to throw this in there, the way the Amplified says it, um, is that they will worm their ways into weak-willed women's homes and deceive the women. Happens all the time. Yeah, guess what? Chicks do the same thing. They worm their way into weak-willed men's arms. We got trouble, and deceit comes out of that. Because when you have a weak will, that means the chooser that's in your brain. The cingulate in your brain is that thing that says, Shh, I'm going to shift, and I'm either moving forward or I'm backing up. This is a yes or this is a no. Let your yes be yes and your no be no is what the Bible says. And when God says something, it is either, it's either a yes or it's a no. He is not a maybe God. Have you noticed that? He's not a sort of kind of, well, we'll see, maybe. <laughs> well, there's a possibility. I don't know. That's our language. You, you don't find that. When Jesus is talking, you don't find that in here. And so the yes or the no is that foundation because you can't have a chair that sort of has something. It could sort of, you know, if I told you, why don't you come here and sit down? And it's like, it'll sort of support you, kind of, possibly. You could try it. I mean, you never know. Depends on who built it, right? And that's when many times we'll do that sovereign thing. God is sovereign. You just don't know about his chairs. It might be his will for you to fall. Then he can teach you something. Does that sound like the, the foundation of Jesus Christ? 
that we're supposed to build on. Sure, then I'll turn around and build that with my kids. Oh, kid, you can't really trust. You know, this is the foundation I was given, so I want you guys to know it's a maybe. We don't know. You can shoot that prayer up to God, but he's sovereign. You just never know. It might have been his will for you to fall. See, now I know I'm messing with you because a lot of you have been taught this stuff. We live life in faith by choice. And many times the things that we said God is teaching us a lesson, we were a part of bringing that to ruin. You know, you start out your day with Mountain Dew and two donuts every morning for breakfast, and somehow God's teaching me something through diabetes. Yep, he had to borrow that from the devil's kingdom because he didn't have anything he could get through to you on. So he's going to borrow that from that kingdom and give you that because he's going to teach you something. That's not word. That's jacked up. That is not the foundation of Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And the Father is absolutely holy and pure. There is no sickness and disease in any of them. So if something's not of our Father's kingdom, not for me. That's a yes or no right there. That's not for me. No. Amen? So fear gives you possibilities of other avenues. Because it could just, you just never know. Your breathing changes. Next thing, you're running scenarios. Well, if aliens did show up, <laughs> we could maybe hide in the, that's like, that's like, you know, they'll tell you to have a bug out bag for different things. I think it's a wise thing. We should always have that because what if you come up on a car accident or something like that? Or you live in a place where there's hurricanes and, you know, the bug out bag has like flashlights and a screwdriver and some granola bars and stuff that you might need that you're like, oh, shoot, I wish I had that. Right. That's pretty cool. But then, you know, if as end times break out even more, where are you going to go? But I have my bug out bag. Yeah. <laughs> but where are you going? I'll just go to in that one woods and then we'll do stuff. See, but we're trying, that's those kind of plans that we're, now, yeah, you can make plans of survival and make it well, but in the end, it's still the end. Am I not right? So the whole time, doesn't matter if something horrible happens or something wonderful happens in our United States. We have to be saying, what foundation am I built on? Can I stand there for on what he said? Do I go by sight more than I... I go by faith. I even had somebody recently said, well, faith is a suggestion. Like I make a faith suggestion to Amber, and I'm like, I suggest you believe this. And then suddenly she's like, oh, the faith of suggestion just told me to do that, so now I believe. Run that same person through some intense situation. They're not going to believe because I suggested it. Are you? No. No. It has to be something that's built inside of you through the word of God, where every time you're reading it, every time you hear it, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It gives you hearing, gives you sight to see into it. It will cause it to go down into your heart. Next thing you know, you're saying it, and now you believe because you go do. You go do. What's your foundation? What are you building on? What was handed to you? Some of the stuff I got was really good. I had like a half a chair. <laughs> I just kept falling over and I couldn't figure out what's the deal. But I had like a half a chair. There was some good stuff there. But um, the rest was like, that is not how you build a chair. But it was more than my parents were given. They had figured some things out and they built. And there was enough of foundation I survived, but not enough to know how to really live. Do I know it all? No, but I hope that the foundation we're on is closer to the look of what Jesus built because we're trying to build on him. I'm not over here trying to build something. Like, I built this chair, Jesus, what do you think? And then present it to him. How you build life is I know nothing. That's how you build life. So, therefore, I have to go to the foundation and build on that. 
because none of us carry absolute truth. He is absolute truth, which makes him the foundation. Right? I had somebody just recently, I just wanted to stretch my back, and I'm that person, probably, you know, a long time ago I taught aerobics and different things. I don't have, like, a, like I don't have a bubble. So if I wanted to lay here and stretch, I'd probably do it. I mean, it would just wouldn't be appropriate for this time. But I mean, I'm not like, well, people will see me. I don't care. I'm going to stretch my back. And so I'll do that. So I was stretching my back and, and this lady, you know, just stretching it. Because if you take care of that before everything knots up, you do better. Right? And so I'm just stretching out or whatever. And then I go to get up and they're like, I'm so concerned for you. She had already ran all these scenarios about how I'm half dead and, and my back's failing and this whole thing. And I'm like, I was just stretching. She goes, you know, I love you. And she comes up and gives me a hug and then just starts rubbing my back in the lower area. You know, you know what I said as she was doing that? Because I would seem so loving and compassionate. I said, I whispered it so she couldn't hear it. I said, I receive nothing of what she has. <laughs> because it was so lack of faith, so pity party, kind of what are you doing, lady? See how that sounds? I mean, that could sound like, Pastor Mary, you're rude. Yeah, in that situation. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kind of lie about it. I'm not going to sit there and go, yeah, I take what you're dishing out. I guess I do have a bad back. No. I work for a living, and sometimes you get knots in your back. Got to work them out. I just had a matrix fall before I left this last week. Well, I don't even know what day it was. I call it a matrix fall because that's how it felt. I was standing on a chair painting in one of our housings and had the had a gallon of paint here. And I thought I was on a really certain like this one I wouldn't stand on. Because see, there's something about you move and it but it's like one of these old school chairs with the big uh, I don't know, like grandma had. They're just real heavy. And I thought, well, I'll stand on that. But I had to get this peak. I was like trying to reach for the peak and I had the paint over here. And I heard within me, you're gonna fall. And I said right out loud, I don't want to fall. I responded to it. It was crazy. It was like, you're going to fall. I don't want to fall. It was that fast. And as I said that, it just went, whew. and as, my, as a chair went over here, it was leaving my body. Um, <laughs> it was no longer a good foundation. Um, I, I, I heard my son's voice. He said, if you're going to fall, because he's a uh, martial artist, and, and he'll teach you how to fall so you don't get hurt. He said, if you're going to fall, fall well. And so... I just went into that mode, and I just felt like I was in the matrix, like, oh, you know, my body was going back. And it felt like totally slow motion. Now, my daughter-in-law, Kristen, Jesse's wife, she's standing back there, and she's watching me. She said, that is the slowest I ever saw someone fall. <laughs> she goes, it was weird. I felt like you were just going to slam. That doesn't even make sense. But she said, I felt like you were like, whoa, you know. And so, so then as it comes down, the paint hits the floor, half a gallon of paint, which is so wasteful. Um, <laughs> came up, slapped the wall, and then baptized me. <laughs> so, and this was, and then the first thing, instead of taking a cool picture of me, um, we were like, oh, no, the floor, because we don't want to ruin the floor. So we got towels, and we're getting this, you know, I got to cross my eye, you know, take my glasses off so I can see. It's just all in my hair. And I got a chiropractor appointment anyway, so I don't want to miss it. But it's not, it, I don't have enough time to go home and go to North Branch. And then that night was the, the fentanyl thing that we were at in Bram. Yeah. So, so I'm like, I'm on a timer. I got to get, so I'm like, I don't know what people are going to think. Then all of a sudden I thought, I don't care. Um, and so I, I showed up there early. Dr. Pete was standing in the parking lot. He looks at me like, what happened? And I just said, hey, can you still work with this? And he, he goes, well, Billy Graham's song, he said, Just come as you are. And <laughs> so then by the time I got home, I only had a little bit of time to get back up to Bram. So I'm trying to get this out of my hair. Four times washing my hair, nothing's coming out. I could take this part of my hair here. It was all dried in such a way that this whole thing lifted up together. I was like, what if I can't get it out? I got to get up to the vent. All you know, and so... <laughs> So and you just thought I waltzed all in there. For those of you who are there, I'll come. I was like, by the time I got there. So, but then I just took like oils and conditioners and just, just put it in there and, and took it out. Why I'm sharing this right now, I don't know. But, 
But there is part of, I trusted that chair. I did. I trusted it. It was pretty solid, too. Yeah. So, but if there's something that's false in it, then you can still fall. The other part is, did I handle using the chair properly? Probably shouldn't have leaned way over here. It's a solid chair. It's a solid chair. So, but it wasn't solid in that moment. It shot out and it was like, what? <laughs> I just was, woo. So he put my head back on straight and I went to the fentanyl meeting and, and we got it done anyway. So what's your chair like? What's your foundation like? What is your, what are you, what have you built on? And is it, did you build on religion? Because religion's not stable. Otherwise, an old school dictionary, when you look it up and it says to go back to bondage is one of the meanings, that doesn't sound like a good, solid foundation. That's a man-made foundation. That's when you start saying stuff is in the Bible. That's not there. You know, our different sayings, like the one, you know, Bad things happen to good people. Bad things just happen. Good or bad, right? You can ask for stuff to happen by seed time and harvest. But bad things just happen. It doesn't matter if you're good or not. It's what you do with them. It's how you approach preempting them. That's everything. What do you believe about yourself that's based on the foundation of Jesus Christ, based on the foundation of opinion from everyone else? Whether or not you're going to make it in sobriety, your own opinion can be a really bad foundation. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Well, I don't want to sit on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know me. I know me, how I've been from that. That's, no, that's not the foundation. It doesn't matter if you know you. Do you know him? Because then I can say, I already know this is jacked. So we don't have to talk about that much. I determined that and all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. I've either participated in sin or it happens to me. And the weakness is still there. That's why we need Jesus, right? So, but then we, we come over here and we've already established that. That's why we put ourselves under the blood of Jesus and we're on his foundation. Because we're not stable. Why do I have to come to church, Pastor Mary? Well, I don't, I'm not going to trust the foundation just by that question. <laughs> but you'll come to my foundation and want to sit on me. <laughs> you ever think about that? Like, you know, you don't try, so you're not building your own or whatever, but that's a pretty sturdy chair. Well, yeah, let's sit on her. She's a good foundation. Well, I'm here to be steadfast in whatever way I can. I don't have a perfect foundation either. But if you're building on Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, the power is there for change. If you're building on me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologize ahead of time. <laughs> I might not always support you. There's some areas I've got to shore up myself. I'm not a superhero. I'm not everybody's savior. But I know a good foundation when I see one. And if we're striving toward that goal, right, then we're in the truth. Everything else is, is uh, performance. Because you could take this other chair that I built that I'm waiting to impress God with. Like, I, I'd go to church more, but I'm still working on my chair. You know, like people tell me, I go to church, Pastor Mary, but I haven't quit smoking yet. Oh, we're scared. Yeah, you better get that together before you come in here. <laughs> it's so dumb. If you could have it together, you'd have done it already. Right? And, and so don't be over here trying to impress building this chair. Or what a lot of times we do is like, I don't really have a foundation, but I'm going to make it look like I do. I'll decorate the outside. And everyone's like, oh, that's pretty impressive. Isn't that a beautiful chair? They put flowers on the back and everything. Right? But stay away. I don't want anybody actually using that. I can't serve. I can't be a part of anything because then I'll be exposed because that really doesn't have a good foundation. Rather than being standing over here and saying, I'm going to be so real. I'm so messed up in so many areas. But God uses me when I rest on his foundation. It's crazy. 
Like, I'll end up ministering in certain things, and I, a lot of times I'll be standing there like, why am I here? You know, and I know it's totally him, and I can't, because I have nothing impressive. I guess why? Neither do you, because our righteousness is as filthy rags, is what the Bible says. So whatever we have that we can put out there that we're so wanting people to be impressed with is still jacked. So we spend more time faking our foundation than we do at the altar repenting for trying to do that. Half of our repentance should be like, sorry about the chair I built. <laughs> I ignored the foundation you provided because I thought maybe I could do something better. I ignored the foundation that you, because I felt ashamed and I didn't want you to know. I didn't know about this. I, and, I, and people were impressed and they love me when I'm over here. Over here, I'm actually admitting junk. And I'm being real. And then when I'm real, I don't know if people are going to love me. Hey, don't none go with me. Still, I will follow. Amen? Your foundation is everything. Second Peter 2.14 in the Amplified talks about, let me see if I can just go there. Sometimes my Bible likes me. I'm doing this left hand. Ooh, kind of, kind of impressing. <laughs> Right now, usually that doesn't work well for me. Um, 214, let's see how she says it. They have eyes full of adultery, constantly looking for sin, enticing and luring away unstable souls. Having hearts trained in greed, they are children of a curse. Curse is not some kind of voodoo. Like, I'm like, uh -uh. you know, suddenly you're like, oh, I don't know what happened, but I feel cursed. No, it means a subtraction from, and sin is the power that does that, right? So you can fall under a curse or the curse just by being under the power of sin. So nobody has to, like, poke a doll or do those things, to, you know, <laughs> to get that to happen. But now, if your eyes are full of adultery, for instance, constantly looking for sin, like I just... I need somebody, I need something or whatever. And adultery can be, um, you're actually sleeping around with people you shouldn't be, but it also can be that I'm lured away from Christ, who I have a relationship with, but I'm really into this thing over here, behind his back, in front of him. Because he still sees, right? But we'll think we're behind his back, but we're in front of him. And um, so... It, but it entices and luring away unstable souls. So if I'm all into that realm, I'm not looking for people who have a good foundation. I will avoid people who have a good foundation. I'm not drawn to them. And if you're into uh, an adulterous kind of thing, the fake thing and all that kind of stuff, there's going to be everything wrong with anybody who has a good foundation. But... They don't have a good foundation. You're looking for your heat seeking where they're unstable. There's got to be a way I can get in with this person. I can use this person. Am I not right? I mean, think about, well, don't think too hard on it, but the using days. You know, if you use drugs, you use people. And you let people use you. So, but how does that look? It's not gracious at all. It's not, you know, like honest, like I'm about to use you. So do you have anything I can purchase? You know, it's not, you know, it doesn't work that way. You're like, you know, there's a certain posture. I'll watch people, they take a certain posture and they're talking, you know, or they pull their hat down. They don't really want to look you in the eye. There's all that because you're searching for where's the unstable. Once I find that, I will lure that part, right? And then I'm going to use them. And sometimes we'll use them knowing they're using us. We're okay with that. We're like, well, go ahead and use me as long as I can use that. That's a person with no foundation. Very unstable. So then what happens is something happens in life because we're working so hard on that realm. Your cat dies and you want to commit suicide. I'm not making fun of it. I'm being real. Because I deal with people all the time. It's, it's, it's like it goes to such a world crisis. But over here, we're using people and we're letting people use us. And it's on the way to death, which is more than your cat dying. I mean, if you really measure where it's at. 
But this will become like, I don't know if I can get over it. It's been five years. I'm being honest. And I don't, you know. There's something to that. We have to come to a point of stability. We have to come to a point where, yeah, think about my cat, my dog. My dog died last year after having 14 puppies. That was rough. Sat in the garage and held her and cried or whatever. But I can't live the rest of my life with that being my top crisis. I have to unpack it and put it away. Right? Love the memories. And move on. But it's very difficult to do that if you're in an unstable spot. You have to have the foundation of why you unpack it a certain way. How come it fits like this? You have to have some truth to bring it back to. Otherwise, like, I don't know what's happening. Things are dying. And it'll make you feel like the whole world is about to run you over. And there's no way out. I want to hit a little harder for some of you and because it's truth. And I'm just that person who's willing to say it because I love you. And I had to walk through it so you don't get to get out of it. <laughs> and that's not really the reason, but, but um, <laughs> maybe there's some of that in the background. I don't know. Um, so, but when you, when you think about it, their eyes are full of adultery, full of how I can get away I want to get away from this relationship and be into other things. But if I found out, if I got a diagnosis, I had cancer or something, and suddenly, where's Jesus? I need my foundation. You got one? Well, I, you know, my grandma used to take me to church, and I got saved in 72 at the, that camp. And so, yeah, uh, just because you got pieces laying there of the chair doesn't mean you ever got to see how it was built. And then now suddenly the full thing's supposed to be there and you're supposed to go, ah, I got something to rest on. Well, sometimes we're, you know, like my family, we called it the first ones out because there was witchcraft, there was sexual sin, there was all the stuff. And then you get born again and then you realize there's not a lot of foundation behind me to let me know how this thing's going to work. And yet you think the devil's encampment is just like, no, feel free, go ahead into salvation no you're easy prey because why you're the first ones out in your generations and he's got you labeled like where you think you're going i got your mother and your grandmother and your great grand I mean, he'll take it back like that you ain't going anywhere so that's when we need more of a foundation right but we don't have it oh so let's just give up no that's when you pretty much live at church as long as the church is alive don't go somewhere where it's dead because dead don't only begats dead. You need to go somewhere where it challenges you every day, makes you mad, sad, glad, all of the above. You don't know what to think. I got to get in this word and dig it out. And, ah, why do they praise like that? Why is that person shouting? Why is she crying? I don't even know what to think. <laughs> Good. Good, because if you come in and we all just know how to stand, praise God. <laughs> right? That's not going to challenge you at all. You'll just become a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. Sometimes we need an altar experience that we don't allow ourselves to have. Why? Because that's outside the box. <sighs> like if I came up and they just prayed for me and I just saw my knees and tears are coming, that is way outside the box. That's exactly what you need. And you know it. And that's when you start pacing in your chair. And you're like, I don't know. you know, pinching the chair in front of you. Like, oh, if I go, what should I do? What, because there's something here that's just saying, get that experience. Get into worship. It's outside the box. I know because I was there. Everything was outside the box. Nobody was even telling us what to sing. Amen, amen, amen. That's how I was raised. I do the amen. You do the amen. You knew every Sunday, same thing every Sunday. And then you sat down because they told you to sit down. You always ended the service with the same song out of the hymnal, page 132. <laughs> so predictable. And that's why I never changed. Because you can't take same information and challenge it with anything because it's already the same information. 
So when you come here, if you get mad, sad, or glad, or you don't even like me for a while. I've had people say, you know, I used to, it's like you disgusted me. I had one lady tell me, I, I was so irritating. Every time I showed up, it was so irritating. Well, then she got born again. That was helpful. But it wasn't because I'm imperfect or perfect. It's, it's just the information would challenge her. And she's like, leave that alone. Don't touch that. Don't touch that area. How will they know unless someone tells them, the word says. And what are the preachers for? Somebody's got to say something. So now we avoid that in this society now? Well, we don't even know that pastors are needed anymore or teachers or any of that. We just feel like we just have God. And then people will tell me this. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm spiritual. <laughs> Woo! Uh-huh. Especially when you're high. Woo-hoo! <laughs> you are so spiritual. Right? Because you've entered into the power of drugs, which is sorcery, which the Bible calls it what it is. Do not participate in sorcery, which is drugs. At that moment, you're very spiritual to all the wrong things, to all the wrong things. And you will see things and hear things and it'll feel so real to you, right? And when someone comes along with the truth that's not in that zone and speaks into that, it's gonna make you mad. So I try to do that with a smile. I'm not always dog the bounty hunter, but there are those occasions you have to do that too. <laughs> But it's, it's something about speaking truth. Someone had to speak into me, and I got really mad. I don't want anything to do with it, because basically what we're saying is, I see your foundation. That's not real. I'm like, yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And then when I had to bring it before the altar, that's when I first realized how broken and needy and jacked up my foundation was. And you literally stand there going, I got, I got nothing to stand on. I got nothing that would support me in a crisis. I got nothing. Then you need to get around some big dogs who have built on the foundation of Christ. They're not perfect, but if you can even see that they got three legs right, whoo <laughs> they know Christ that much or whatever, it might be more than what you got. But you don't go to a person who has the same thing you have and think you're going to get something different. So you allow yourself to be challenged, challenged in praise and worship, challenged. You know, what? I, I'm just going to be because I am blunt. I'm just going to be blunt enough to say some people have wanted to come out to word of life, but they're scared to because what they hear on the streets. There's always a word on the street, right? <laughs> word on the street is word of life's a cult. Well, I just happen to be co-pastor over there. So you are now in a cult right here. Half the cult is over here, right? Do you ever think about that? So, so, but we get scared to come over there because the worship is more intense than it is in here. And the worship and the praise, and my husband's a better teacher, and I can just go on and on with things that are more intense. It is a regional center. It is here to affect the region and build churches all around. And that's what we're all about. That's why we're up in Red Lake. That's why we have this here. So I'm saying this to challenge you in a way to come over and just sit in something you've never experienced. Sit in it. It'll freak you out. It'll have, make you ask questions. Sometimes we've also learned that, you know, you, you're not allowed to say, how'd they build that? We'll just ask them over there. Oh, I, no, I don't ask questions. How do you learn? How do you learn? Well, guess what? In certain places, it's not allowed. Or I've had so many people say, um, you know, I asked a question and the guy just blew me off. Or I asked a question and they were like, well, we'll just pray about it. You don't actually get an answer. If you ask me a question, there's a good amount of stuff I'm not going to know. There's a whole lot of stuff I do know. But there's stuff I don't know. So at that point, if you don't know and I don't know, we better go find out. You know, it's just don't go, I don't know. And, and for Vern, many times he'll stay after service. Sometimes for a couple hours, a lot, he does this and just answers questions. 
Because if you don't get your questions answered, you just sit and look at the foundation. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. It looks like it's solid, but how did they do that? If you want things like cancers being healed and things like that, you better push in to figure out how did that foundation get built? We didn't build it. It's the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's what we've been trying to say the whole time. See, so sometimes you'll see comments online, oh, there'll always be comments online, or people will, word on the street, right? They'll talk trash, and they'll be talking, well, they say, you know, people are getting healed, and there's different things, eh, it's a cult, it's, it's whatever, until, this is what I found, until you get that diagnosis. You'll be the first person in my office. Because you heard we built something. Well, guess what? We didn't. All we're doing is standing on the foundation, sitting on the foundation that's already been built by Christ. Can you see that? So I want to challenge you because I know there's areas that you're like, oh, it's already crazy coming here on Saturday. <laughs> Come challenge yourself some more. What, what could happen? We lock the doors. <laughs> Let's run some scenarios. You ain't going anywhere. I know where you live and all that kind of stuff. No, because if you know who you are, you can walk into a place and be like, hmm, that's interesting, and walk out. Nobody dies. If you believe that you're going to die, that comes from this lack of foundation. I don't want to be deceived. So what are you doing now that's going to keep you on the right track? Nothing. Because you don't want to be deceived. So we isolate and we stay alone because we don't want to be deceived. Well, if something happens at Word of Life or here that challenges you, get in the Word and find out. Research it. You got a brain. You can use it. You got prayer. You can go before the throne of God and say, God, reveal this to my heart. That's the best kind of foundation. Word in the Spirit. Word in the Spirit. Not Pastor and Pastor Mary. So if you have trust issues with people, that's not the thing. The issue is the foundation. If we're constantly saying, get to the foundation, I'll show you the foundation. This is what the word says the foundation is. Here's, here's, let's try the foundation. See how stable it is. Come on, I'll pray with you. That's awesome. But if at any time, Pastor and I are just like, you know, God has just showed me so much. And I just really feel like with the abilities he's given me, I just always have been gifted if I start talking like that, get out. <laughs> I give you permission. That's the person you should be like, I'm out. I'm just out, right? But you know me. We don't talk like that. The foundation is Christ. If you don't understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is what people do. I, and this is not just here. This is everywhere I go, and I preach a lot of places. <laughs> and, and people will be like, oh, I don't know about that. <sighs> They love the signs and wonders that follow, but it's like, hey, uh, you know, then ask the question. Mm, no, I'm not going to ask the question. Because we always follow it up with, we know there's going to be a debate. I don't debate the word. If you know something is true, you don't have to debate it. God doesn't need my protection. The foundation is the foundation is the foundation. You can call it a lie and still be truth. So who am I to be like, no, I'm going to tell you something about the word, you know? <laughs> And now I got to protect God because you can't be saying that about my God. No, my attitude is more like, ah, oh, it's kind of sad that you're not open to learning about a new foundation. And you're stuck in that old one. Now, you can live life. A lot of people are saved and stuck in an old foundation, sitting on a chair that won't support them, and they will go to heaven. But I'd rather live life than survive it. Amen? And in this world, there's going to be trouble. But take heart. He has already overcome the world. Well, how did he do that? That's a good question. Right here, the foundation. It's Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. What did we fall short of? That crappy foundation that fell short of the glory of God. The power of sin did that to us when we participated in it or somebody did it to us. We fell short. And his whole thing is to get us back to the glory, the way he does things.
a peace of God that passes all understanding. It'll keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand. So I'm going to challenge you. Tomorrow's service is at 10. Now, I won't be preaching. Pastor Vern won't be preaching. But um, you can look up online uh, regarding Igor. And uh, he's a young man that just carries the anointing. Um, and it would be just fun to see you there and, and uh, rest in that. And bring your questions, whether it be after service or for here. You know you can text me with questions? Something, huh? <laughs> you can email questions. And uh, there's not going to be where I announce from the front, Amber had a question, you know, none of that. We can just answer it because if you have that question, so do about 10 other people, right? Or more. So tomorrow's service is at 10 a.m. You can look at the Lion's Den flyer. It'll give our website and different things, wordoflifemn.org. And um, it's not even about, I want to I say this, because this comes back to being hurt and having to put on a fake foundation. The first thing that goes through most people, because it went through me, is like, you're trying to get us to join your church. Oh, yeah, all in one Sunday. Woo. <laughs> we'll just get you in there, and we're like, you better do this. You know, No. In fact, our church does not, the word of life does not allow you to become a covenant partner till six months of attending. Because it's kind of, you know, we teach on boundaries, but then you come into a place, you're like, ah, it's my second Sunday, I think I'll join. This is not a gym membership. Because <laughs> people who join like that when they join churches, just like your gym membership, huh? How many times did you actually go? And they still charged you the monthly. <laughs> and you put up with it, right? So there, there's something to this where this is about you being challenged. If you go twice and never go back, you need to challenge where your foundation is at. You need to bring up the questions within you. Amen? Can happen at a Bible study, too. But get somewhere where you're like, I did not know that. That's a good thing. I did not know that. I need to be challenged. So, Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for what you're doing and what you did when you built the foundation. You're not creating a new foundation right now. There's already one there. You're drawing us to you so that we can become stable on your stableness. So that we can become healed on your healing power. That we can become delivered because of your deliverance foundation. That we can become prosperous in all things, in all times, in all ways that we might give according to 1 Corinthians. Lord, that you bring us to this place, and it's all built on your foundation. And we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That means it's not up to a pastor. That means it's me seeking you out on my face before God, seeking you until I find you, knocking until the door is opened, asking until the answer comes. Cause us to be teachable, Lord God. That's what the word says when it says to become like a child. The word picture there means to be teachable. And cause the churches all across this land to be safe enough that when someone has a question, it's okay to ask it. Grow us like never before, Lord God, in the name of Jesus.